Here in Swansea, we teach anatomy to the medical students in small groups. We have lots of teachers, which is great, but unfortunately, one of our surgeons forgot to come to teaching this week. Uh, and the topic he was covering was small, there was the blood supply to the small intestine. So that's what we're gonna do now as a bit of a backfill for the students of Swansea and anybody else on the internet who might want to watch that sort of thing. First things first, a bit of embryology is very helpful whenever we're talking about the, the blood supply to the GI tract. We're talking about foregut, midgut and hindgut and we're thinking about the aorta. Essentially the, the what is in the adult a fairly complicated tube that our food passes through in the embryo starts off as a very simple tube and there's a bit of a cavity which is, becomes the abdominal cavity in the adult. Uh, and in that cavity, that tube moves away from the posterior abdominal wall, drags the peritoneum with it, forming a mesentery, and it gets longer and longer and longer and more complicated and what have you. Now that describes how the small bowel is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by mesentery, and that mesentery is then gonna carry all the blood vessels to and from the small intestine and the lymphatics from and the nerves to and from and that sort of thing. But the bit I'm highlighting is these three branches of the aorta here. So in the abdominal aorta, we see three anterior branches, and these are the celiac trunk, which in Britain we spell with an O, which we probably shouldn't, but I'm going to anyway. We have the superior mesenteric artery, oh, mesenteric, mesentery, and the inferior mesenteric artery. Those are the three branches, and those three arteries supply blood to the GI tract. And in the embryo, we have regions of that simple tube, foregut, midgut, hindgut. The midgut is the bit that's going to form a loop and stick out and stuff, but the foregut is supplied with blood by the celiac trunk. The midgut with blood by the mesenteric, superior mesenteric artery and the hindgut with blood by the inferior mesenteric artery. Now the foregut, the last part of the foregut is the duodenum, the first part of the small bowel. And then the midgut is gonna form the rest of the duodenum, the entire small bowel uh, and the ascending colon and part of the transverse colon. So we need to talk about the blood supply from the celiac trunk to part of the duodenum and from the superior mesenteric artery to the rest of the duodenum and the small bowel. And that's our blood supply to the small intestine, all right? So start at the start, I guess. Sounds like the seagulls are having a lovely day, day outside today. Right, I'm gonna to need to put a little bit of this back, I think, aren't I? Right, so this is pancreas duodenum here. And we can see some blood vessels there. And here we've also got duodenum and pancreas. So we're looking at the same thing twice. Uh, you'll see why as we go. So what I've done is I've had to take off the transverse colon to show that. Right, now what we've got in there, so there's the celiac trunk. So it continues out here and it gives off a bunch of blood vessels. Um, we, we've looked at the blood supply to the stomach. So I think I probably talked about the branches of the celiac trunk in most detail there. But what we see is, so there's the celiac trunk again there. What we see is the celiac trunk then gives off this common hepatic artery. So you can imagine where this common hepatic artery is going to go. It's going to go up to the liver. So it's going to supply the liver with arterial blood. Now as it goes, it then gives off a gastroduodenal artery, uh, which is what we're starting to see coming around here. So the gastroduodenal artery is going to supply blood to the gastro, the gaster, the stomach, and to the duodenum. So the gastroduodenal artery continues, and we see it here giving off a branch. Now this, in fact, we see a loop here, which is interesting. It's always interesting when we see a loop um, anatomically, because we, we're seeing anastomoses, we're seeing you know, potential collateral circulation routes. This here 
is the superior pancreatico duodenal artery. So the gastro duodenal artery actually gives off two of these. It gives off an anterior one that we can see here and a posterior one that we can't see. So this would really be the anterior superior pancreatico duodenal artery. And here's the duodenum looping around here. So this artery is going to supply blood to the duodenum and to the pancreas. Now, we describe the division between foregut and midgut as occurring at the point where the bile duct enters here. So this uh, major duodenal papilla, where we have all this hepatopancreatic stuff. So that would be the flow of, that would be the supply of blood to the first part of the small intestine, the first part, well, the first and second part, to these parts of the duodenum, right? Uh, celiac trunk, common hepatic artery, gastroduodenal artery, and superior pancreaticoduodenal arteries. Now, of course, the next bit is going to come from the superior mesenteric artery. Uh, it's interesting to note how close the superior mesenteric artery is to the celiac trunk, and also how the superior mesenteric artery lies just superior to the left renal vein. These are all useful clinical anatomy bits here to be aware of. So, I mean, you read in textbooks that the superior mesenteric artery branches from the aorta at the L1 level. Is that something you're going to remember? Is that something that's going to be useful to you? Or is, is remembering that here's the superior mesenteric artery, or here are the kidneys, here's the renal vein, here's the celiac, is all that relative anatomy much more useful to be aware of than just like a, a level in a table in a textbook? I think so. This is why looking at models and looking at cadavers is so useful. Okay, so the superior mesenteric artery, right, if we put this back, if we put this back on, that's what we're seeing there. And it's, it's within the mesentery here, so it's covered by, you know, a layer of peritoneum. So the mesentery is two layers of peritoneum running out and around the tube of the bowel. So that's why it's a little bit faint there. Here, this has been dissected away, so it's a little bit clearer. And look, there's that loop. Uh, can we see it here? No, not really. So this here, so if this is the superior pancreatico duodenal artery, the anterior one, this is the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery, the anterior one. And that's going to loop around, meet the other pancreatico duodenal arteries, and form this lovely looping arcade, which is going to supply blood to the duodenum and to the pancreas. So that's the duodenum done, pretty much. The next parts of the small intestine, so the duodenum goes like this, curls around, then it goes up a little bit, and then it continues as the jejunum. Um, surgeons here, I've heard them call it jejunum, I've heard it call it, call it jejunum, whatever you like. So the first part of the small intestine is the, is the jejunum, and eventually along its length, it's like a maze, isn't it? Um, eventually it will become the ileum. I've heard surgeons call this part of the small intestine the ileum and the ileum, so whatever. Um, there are differences between the jejunum and the ileum. Uh, histologically, if you look at it, it's quite clear. There's some difference in blood supply, which we should mention. Um, but to be honest, there's not like a division between jejunum and ileum. It's, it's a slow transition from one to the other. So they are a bit different. They do have different functions. But what we can say is we expect to find the jejunum up here and we expect to find the ileum down here. And the ileum will then end as it passes into the cecum, the first part of the large bowel. So that's that, that ends our interest. All right, so this small bowel is, of course, very, very long, and it's held in place by mesentery, so it is, it is mobile. Uh, and mm, we can't really see. So here, the superior mesenteric artery is being cut, but you can see that a lot of branches leave the superior mesenteric artery early on. Um, and they've been cut through here. So what they're doing is they're passing into this mesentery. So then we're going to have, this is the straightforward bit, um, jejunal and ileal arteries branching from the superior mesenteric artery and running within the mesentery towards the small bowel. 
those arteries will then be named by which region of small bowel they're running towards. And there are around 15 or 16, 17, 18 maybe of these branches from the superior mesenteric artery passing to the small bowel. Now what we would see here if this was intact is we'd expect to see this superior mesenteric artery kind of looping around in, in that kind of direction. So there's a bit of a curve to it almost towards the end of the ilium. And as it goes, it's going to be sending off lots of branches to the jejunum and the ilium. And don't forget, of course, this is the artery of the midgut, so it is going to also send off branches to the ascending colon and parts of the transverse colon, parts of the large bowel. Um, but essentially, this is what we're seeing here. So the superior mesenteric artery curls around and gives off a number of jejunal and ileal arteries. Now the last branch that it gives off in terms of the small intestine is the ileocolic artery. And the ileocolic artery is going to supply blood to the last part of the ileum and colic is going to supply blood to the, the first parts of the ascending colon. That ileocolic artery will then have an ileal branch or ileal branch to the last part of the ilium and the colic branch. So we've got all these branches running from the superior mesenteric artery towards the small intestine, but that's not the entire story. If you've got the, the superior mesenteric artery doing that and it's giving off all of these branches, so it gives off a bunch of branches. These would be, you know, jejunal branches, and then these would be maybe ileal branches. Remember, there are lots more than this. But these then, they link up like this. So they all link together. And this is a really good idea. So these are the arterial arcades. And then from these arterial arcades, we see these, these straight arteries. And these are the vasa recta. And the vasa recta are then extending to the bowel. So then the, the small intestine will be running along here. So vasa recta, literally straight blood vessel, straight artery, rectum, straight. Vasa. So, and then that means that over millions of years of evolution, um, we have built in a lot of redundancy to the GI tract, not just in us, but in other animals as well. And that's really important because if an artery gets occluded, if you get um, ischemia to a region of the bowel, that can be really, really dangerous. It can be fatal. So there's a lot of redundancy that's evolved into the blood supply to the small intestine to limit that risk of ischemia to the small bowel. All right small intestine. So you can see that what we've done here is this is, what, this is what it would look like if it was if the small intestine had been straightened out and the mesentery had flattened. So take this idea and then scrunch it all up into the small intestine and <laughs> squidge it back into the abdominal cavity uh, and um, yeah that's what it looks like. Okay so that's it, that's the blood supply to the small intestine um, as the small intestine is derived from both foregut and midgut. It receives blood from the celiac trunk and superior mesenteric artery. The celiac trunk is going to supply blood to the duodenum pretty much as far as where the bile duct enters and then the superior mesenteric artery is going to supply blood to the remainder of the duodenum and to the entire small intestine up to the point where it enters the large intestine. Um, and the, the gastroduodenal artery and pancreaticoduodenal arteries are going to supply blood to the duodenum. And then we have jejunal and ileal, if you like, arteries supplying blood to the small bowel, linked up by arterial arcades and vasa recta that extend to the small intestine themselves. All right, that's it. That's the blood supply to the small intestine. It is important and it is hopefully straightforward. All right, uh, see you guys next week then.